when it comes to this bending from the hips and letting the trail hand hang off here, just close your eyes briefly. Feel like you are planted equally between your toes and your heels. Absolutely. Just like that, huh? Yeah. So a very important component of the golf swing is really, when we look at the domino effect, how you set up influences mm -hmm. takeaway in the backswing is your distance from the golf ball, Yeah. right? We see so many variations out there, Joe. We see people standing very tall and chilling out like this. We see people bent over like this. Now, you've got a great reference for where players should be in the setup. Yeah. Uh, and it's a check that everyone can do, actually, before they hit a golf shot. It doesn't matter if it's practicing or on the course. And if I get into my setup position, and you can test me out to start off with, what is the instruction that you give a player who wants to check how far away from the ball they should be? Yeah, we get these questions all the time, right? It's like, oh, after they hit a shot and we tell them, get a little bit closer, get a little further. Yeah. They're always like, how do you know that? How do you know that? <laughs> and it's always the simple things that always kind of resonate the most with, yeah. with the players. And whenever I see this, I'm like, oh. So they easy. love that the most. And it's like the simplest thing ever. So when you go, go ahead and get kind of to your setup here, I just like them to get this trail hand off. And with that trail hand is just hanging, just right down from your shoulders here. That's exactly where it should be hitting the club. Yeah. When we start to get guys that is maybe reaching too much, mm -hmm. now they feel like now they got to kind of reach yeah. too close to it Big right? time. or to get to it. Now, when they're too close to it yeah. and they let their arms hang, now their arms are hanging over here, yeah. right? And now it actually helps address that front bend doesn't it? Correct. It's like when guys are, are bending their knees too much, now it feels like when they're letting it hang, it's just hitting them in between the legs, mm -hmm. right? So I feel like this is probably one of the most simple things, but whenever I say it, um, I always get probably some of the best reactions. Like, oh, it's yeah. so simple and it works so well. Yeah, it, do, it does. And I, w I would just go one step further in regards to when it comes to this bending from the hips and letting the trail hand hang off here, just close your eyes briefly. Feel like you are planted equally between your toes and your heels. Absolutely. Because Jar's gonna show us in a second, but essentially when I let my right hand hang off the golf club, it should hang directly beneath my shoulder if we're drawing a line here. Yeah. Now I can still make that happen and Absolutely. put my hand on the golf club, but if I close my eyes, I am the leaning tower about to fall down there. Oh yeah. And I think that probably, I mean, this is gonna work pretty well for an iron yeah. for the most part, yeah. but definitely not so much with the driver. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just like what you're saying, we maybe like to see from the down the line view where maybe that right thumb mm -hmm. just hanging, just probably kind of in front where the base of the neck and the front of the shoulder is, Yeah. right? And now with the driver, I'm just like, oh, okay, why don't you just reach a little bit? because yeah. that spine inclination yeah. is going to change as well mm -hmm. and i just kind of like to see it anywhere between the nose yeah. and kind of the middle of their face yeah and right? i think it's important for a lot of players to reference is you do you do not need a different setup and a different ball position for every single club through the bag. I would say you throw it into a bucket, there are slight differences in the setup between a driver really and an iron mm -hmm. mainly because the length of the club will dictate that you're gonna be more upright. And then if I let my right hand hang off, well, I'm not standing at the urinal, am I? So yeah. I need to make sure that there is a little bit of a distance away so I've got enough room Absolutely. to give myself or get myself into a position where I could get yeah. that club going through. And probably the most common thing that we, you and I grew up with is like, okay, set up to it. Should be about yeah. a palm length. Yeah. That probably is not gonna work quite the same yeah. with the driver, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, I just find out that, you know, that's probably the most the question that one of the questions that we get the most when we're teaching, you know, beginner golfers or mm. or average golfers, is like, how far do I need to set up? Yeah. Right. And and if we can get kind of the foundations and the setup consistent, whether if it's a little bit via one way or the other, now they can kind of have a reference point and sit there and maybe tweak some other. Yeah, mate, absolutely love it. Yeah. So I think every player at home, what they can do, and my little checkpoint for getting equal weight distribution between mm -hmm. your toes and your heels at a dress is to actually just keep your feet moving up and down because okay. your body's gonna naturally find its balance point. If I'm too far on my toes here, yeah. I feel like I'm gonna fall forward. Yeah,
almost like a little shuffle. Yeah, exactly. Right? So you'll see pros stay active and dynamic just before they hit the shot. And this prepares your body to make that fluid motion. If I'm doing that and I let my right hand just very briefly kind of sit off, you don't even need to let go of the club. It's just like having an awareness yeah. that's there. Well, I feel like a little bit of, um, activation through my backside here. My arms feel nice and soft. Yeah. I feel like I'm ready. I, I want to yeah. hit it. <laughs> I love that. And, and a lot of the times it even helps them set their, their pelvis tilt. So many things. It helps them set maybe the amount of knee flex that they need, mm. right? I love that. Uh, and you're probably not surprised because you've seen it so many times where, you know, you ask them to maybe shuffle left and right, and it's actually really hard yeah. for certain players. Because they're so used to going, yeah, and some guys will go here with no knee flex and be like, oh, that feels so com uncomfortable. Yeah. But I love that. I love it, keeping it kind of flowy mm -hmm. and maybe helping them find the right spot with, with a few really simple kind of movements that they can maybe try to apply to their, their game. Yeah, and the last thing I just want to briefly touch on before we tie on, this is all about... Uh, what you feel like you're doing at this stage, if there is a performance gap relative to your expectations, meaning you're not getting the results that you're looking for, even though it feels normal, it's just because your body is habitually used to that pattern. And whenever you make a change, it is going to feel uncomfortable at first, but that's just the same as any other discipline that you're trying to learn. So when you're getting yourself set up, having little references like, can I move my feet up and down and I feel balanced? If I close my eyes, am I equally distributed between my toes and my heels? And then the whole theme of today is just letting that trail hand kind of hang off. Well, then all of a sudden you're gonna be in a position where your body is athletic, it's powerful, it's ready to make a motion, which you're going to be able to recreate time and time again on different services out in the jungle of the golf course because of the variations of lies. If you just follow those two, your body would find its natural balance. You don't have to go, well, I need three degrees more here, over here, and back and forth. I think that especially when we're kind of building things with, with players, you see it all the time. Okay, grip routine yeah. back here, but when you're seeing a platter or better player like yourself, you're relying on even smaller details than that. Mm -hmm. Things like the shuffle yeah. or things like, okay, arms hang, how your body is feeling in space, right? Um, I think that that's a wonderful lesson that you're sharing. All right, mate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the guys at home really what I would do if I was approaching the golf ball. Uh, they're going to be slightly smaller micro moves relative to the exaggeration that we were showing okay. you. But this will just start to then build an understanding of that pros. Next time you watch this, you'll see every pro to some degree do what I'm about to show you. They'll walk in, they'll line their club face, they're looking at the target, they're moving their feet up and down. As I let my hands come off, you can see how I'm softening my arms. Well, if I do that, that's the same thing except letting my hands come off. I'm looking at the target, I'm thinking about the target, then off we go. And you know what, mate? That was Flush. the best one today. Good job.